I was just about to do an experiment and thought you might like to actually join in and see what happens. So this is a disposable cell salvaged from a vapor device. This is a standard TP4056 charge module set for 500 milliamps. And I've got a power bank here as well. And the other thing I'll add to this is actually a little power monitor. I shall plug that in now. A Ruedang power monitor. But instead of charging this cell directly, I'm going to do something that has been asked in the past. I'm going to put a Schottky diode in series with it. Now, let me show you this. If I bring in this little schematic, it's not a very complicated schematic. What I'm going to do is the charger, instead of connecting it straight to the cell, I'm putting that Schottky diode in. And typically, the voltage across a Schottky diode will be somewhere between 0.2 volts to 0. say about 5 volts could go higher it depends the current flowing through it but when you test these diodes with your meter you'll often see a voltage of 0.2 volts and the lower the better in this instance because what i want to do is i want to charge this cell up to less than 4.2 volts this thing is looking for that 4.2 volts theoretically if it actually just basically charged up to the point that this was just dropping for uh, 0.2 volts then it would be a 4 volt charge and that's going to extend the life of the lithium cell greatly I think the military use a 3.9 volt threshold for some of their lithium cells because that makes the lithium cells last a lot longer. It puts them under much less stress. You get more cycles out of them. So here is the setup. The lithium cell, the inline Schottky diode, the 1N5187, which is a typical 1 amp diode, rated about 20 volts, I think. Here's the charger. And I just need a charger lead now, and we'll see what happens. We'll be able to see from the amount of current that goes in from this what's actually happening. So let's plug this in here. And the charge LED lights, and it's showing the full 500 milliamps. Let's monitor the voltage across the lithium cell. So this is set to 20 volts. And this is going to be a longish test, but you won't have to wait. So that's 3.56. It's creeping up quite quickly. Uh, right, tell you what then. I shall pause until something exciting happens, but it's still showing at roughly 500 milliamps in this meter. So, um, right, I shall pause and come back when something interesting has happened. One moment, please. So the first update is much faster than expected. The current has tailed off. It's now down to half the current. And if I measure the voltage across the lithium cell, it's at 3.7 volts. But because the diode's in series, it's actually seeing 4.08, best part of 4.1 volts, which is why the current is tailing off. And if I go across that shock diode, it's dropping about 0.35 volts. Uh, it was dropping over... 0.4 uh, volts initially at the start of the charge. Okay, I shall let you know if something happens soon. One moment, please. Progress report. Still charging, it's down to 112 milliamps. Let's measure the voltage across the battery at this point in time. 3.76, so barely over half capacity. This could take a long time to charge. What is the voltage across the what? Well, what's the uh, what's the voltage across the diode? I was going to say Zener. It's a Schottky diode. The voltage across it, if I can get it into the terminal here. The voltage across the Schottky diode is 0.33 volts. So it's dropping as the uh, as the sort of, uh, the current through it lowers, and the voltage the thing is seeing at the moment is 4.1. So it's still, it's just basically, it's doing that final curve thing, even though the battery's only half charged. This doesn't bode well for fast charging. But anyway, we shall let the experiment continue. Next update. So the unit has now gone into an oscillation mode. It's average, averaging out about, say, 35 milliamps. It's ewing up and down. Let's check the voltage. And what's actually happening here is that the current through the diode here is causing the voltage across it to rise. So it sees its full end of charge voltage and it cuts off. But then because the current is cut off, it sees then the voltage drops and uh, it turns the current back on again. It basically oscillates. But it's doing it on a sort of 
duty cycle such that it is only about 30 or so milliamps. Let's see what the voltage across the battery is. 3.77. It's not great, is it? That's, you know, it's it's okay, but it's not great. Uh, what about the voltage across the... This is going to be an average voltage, really, because uh, it is just pulsing current. It's about 0.25 across the uh, diode, and what it's seeing is roughly 4.03 volts, but it is oscillating up and down. Hmm, tricky. Right, tell you what, I'm going to leave it on... Charging continuously, and we'll see what voltage that the lithium cell finally gets up to. I think that'll be the last section of this video, because uh, I get the feeling this is how it's going to be for the rest of the charge cycle, and it's going to take a long time. And several hours later, the experiment has concluded. The current has dropped way down to just 1 or 2 milliamps, which may just be part of the circuitry and LEDs. If I test the output of this unit, has gone down to approximately 4 volts, so it thinks the charge has ended. Now, it's worth mentioning that there was a point of instability that it was flickering uh, backwards and forwards quite vividly, but then it went solid red again, but it was showing a very low charge current of 20 or 30 milliamps, as if it was at the end of the charge cycle. However, the final charge on the cell is... Let's bring the meter in for this. The final charge is... 3.89, do we round up and say 3.9 volts, which is, I believe, the military standard uh, for charging lithium cells for reliability. Well, that equates to 80% capacity and means the cell is going to have a much longer life than if it was left at charge to 4.2 volts continually. So that's uh, kind of, it's kind of worked. It took a lot longer to charge the cell, but in some instances that might not be an issue, like in emergency lighting. Um, where you just, or standby lighting, where you just want to put a small amount of current in and just not have it go too high. But it does, the module, the TP4056 module was not overly happy about that. Um, however, it did the job. I'll let you draw your own conclusion of whether this was a success or not. I think it was kind of a success, but to be honest, I'd rather have a dedicated chip that you could set the, the upper programming, you know, you could program the upper voltage to say 4 volts instead of 4.2 or 3.9 volt. But there we go. Interesting test, and it had to be done, and worthy results.